until somebody beats the Warriors, we're all going to be sitting here and wondering how can the Warriors be beaten in in free agency, or even better yet, having them broken up by free agency. And we had Winhorst again, as I mentioned yesterday, saying that he that uh, Draymond Green hired Rich Paul because he's going to go to the mattresses. He wants to go to war in this uh, non-playing right. season. Clay Matthew, uh, Clay Thompson, as we all know, uh, can walk just like Durant. But what what's why can't Durant win a third time, sit down with uh, management in Golden State and Steve Kerr and basically say, stick around here. Um, we'll, we'll make it a more friendly situation for you. And you can not uh, get the legacy of trying to start your own thing. And good luck with that with James Dolan, which obviously they can, won't say, but that's just me going down a Dolan wormhole. But saying to him, right. you, can, you can be dynastic on the form potentially of the Boston Celtics of those great years. Why, why, why can't Durant hear that and say, you know what, I'll just stay put? Uh, I mean, he could, you know what I mean? He absolutely could. I think the thing that Kevin has got to analyze and is going to have to analyze as he gets closer to free agency is the organization's top to bottom. Like what you just hit on with James Dolan, uh, and, and I can't speak for the Warriors, I can't speak for even the Clippers or even the Lakers. You know, these other franchises, though, I guarantee you are looking at the Knicks going, you got to be kidding me. You know, you got an owner who is, is widely considered one of the worst in the league and an infrastructure that is, you know, scrutinized with good reason year in, year out, and then a track record that is pretty abominable. And because of the city that you're in and kind of the appeal potentially of coming to play there and kind of be the savior and get them to the mountaintop, you're going to get maybe the best guy in the league. That's challenging because the Warriors look at it like, look what we've built from Joe Lacob and Peter Goober on down, the synergy between their front office and their coaching staff. You know, they check a lot of boxes that the Knicks simply don't. So, could that happen? Sure. I think the one thing that is fair to just make sure that it's part of the conversation, though, is that any of these free agents, a guy like Kevin, when you have you know three years now of sharing the same oxygen with the same other players, and, and the narrative that I, if I had to guess, is probably not his favorite, that Steph Curry built this thing. And, and you, it doesn't matter what you do, how many finals MVPs you stack up, you know, you're, you're still going to be the guy who, who joined late in the game. And that's a tough narrative for him because the reality is that if you look at these last couple of years, uh, Kevin Durant should take as much credit as anybody, you know, for the success they've had. They, they, he has been the game changer they hoped he would be when he came a couple summers ago. But uh, I think the human stuff, you know, it eventually and potentially might be what drives them out. Give me the team that's best positioned to beat the Warriors now and the team with cap space, max contract space, the ability to make trades or what have you, that is best positioned to beat the Warriors and break them up or take take over uh, the NBA in the long run right now? So for the now, I'm having a little bit of recency bias. Uh, I've, Milwaukee is in my neck of the woods this week, and I have studied their, their game and some of their tape recently. I've studied their numbers, and I think we're still overlooking them. And I know it's rare to see a team go from, you know, first round playoff exits to championship level basketball, but it's really hard for me right now to not buy what the Bucks are selling. They, they're the only team in the league that is top five in offensive rating and defensive rating. Giannis, uh, I think right now, if I had to pick, is the MVP. Uh, the, Mike Budenholzer has unlocked something not only in him, but in them as a group with some great roster moves by John Horst and his front office where they've got a system and a combination of a system and star power that uh, I really think are going to make some noise in the playoffs. So that would be right now, you know, going forward. I don't know if I, the, I'm having a hard time making the correlation between the teams with space and that necessarily leading to being the to kind of the golden state bust up candidate. Cause Denver is a, a squad that I look at and the, it's going to be improvements around the edges for them but they have a core that I don't think people realize how young it is. And it's already really, really good. And, you know, we're seeing them right there in the standings with a team like the Warriors. So I'm bullish on Denver. Uh, you know, as far as the explosive free agency possibilities, it's going to be, I think it's Boston. You know, if, if they can get AD in this trade, re-sign Kyrie, which is a free agency move, then they're going to be on their way. And I think, uh, you know, that could be the squad that's raising the trophy pretty soon here. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.